Good morning, my friends. My name is Mindy, and I have lost over 120 pounds on Wegovy, Mancharo, semaglutide compound, and I am now back on Wegovy again, and it is Sunday. Today marks the beginning of chaos. <laughs> this week is going to be absolutely crazy. It is Abby's second birthday this week. I cannot believe she is already two. I remember the day she was born like it was yesterday. It's just crazy to me that it's already been two years. This weekend we're celebrating her birthday party. We're doing a unicorn party. I'm sure that I will probably take some sort of footage to share with you guys on next week's video, but today my husband has to drive to Lubbock, so he's gonna be gone all day today and into tomorrow. I have so much to get done today. I probably should, not probably should have, I definitely should have done some of the things that I needed to do today yesterday, but I didn't, and here we are. Yay, procrastination. Today is one of the only chances that I'm gonna have to get to spend with you guys, so I figured I better get it done or I have no idea what's gonna happen. <laughs> Today is a big sale day at Randall's. If you missed my video on eating a high protein diet on a budget, definitely check that out here. One of the best ways that I know to eat high protein on a budget is to make sure you're shopping the sales. In my area, Randall's, which is also Vaughn's or Safeway, they often have really, really good sales on meat. So I watch the weekly, ads and both randalls that are in my area are not that close to me like they're a good 20 minutes away but it's worth the drive when they have a lot of sales to stock up on the meats that we eat frequently because being on a high protein diet we do go through with only two of us four to six pounds of meat a week so that can get very very pricey if you're not buying meat when it's on sale and we keep our budget to under a hundred dollars a week for our groceries that isn't our whole food budget because we do go out to eat several times a week we go out at least three times a week we try to keep it down to three but sometimes we go a little bit more depending on what's happening in our week but meat can get very very pricey especially with the way things are going with the economy so Randall's this week has 93% lean ground beef on sale for $3.99 a pound, which is a good two to three dollars a pound cheaper than it is normally at my HEB. So anytime it goes on sale for $3.99 a pound, because it does at least once a month, I usually get, you know, five to 10 pounds, 10 pounds being the limit. They almost always have boneless, skinless chicken breast and chicken thighs for $1.99 a pound. So I picked those up. I have been noticing that chicken in general, like wherever I buy it, there are those giant dinosaur chicken breasts and they have a tendency to be really tough and rubbery. So I just bought a new meat tenderizer. I call it a torture device because it looks like one. It's a needle tenderizer. And I'm gonna be using it this week for the first time and I'm hoping that it really makes a difference in how tender my chicken is. I'll definitely report back and let you guys know. Chuck roast is also on sale for $3.97 a pound, which again is another two to three dollars a pound cheaper than what I can normally get it for at HEB. So this week my grocery budget will probably be a little bit more than the hundred dollars that I normally spend, but on weeks when there isn't any meat on sale or when I'm not having to buy meat because I have plenty of it in the freezer, I usually only end up spending about $50 a week. Just planning ahead, taking advantage of your freezer. I use a vacuum sealer to pre-portion one, one and a half, two pound packages of those meats because that's pretty much the quantities that I use when I cook a recipe. So that's what we're up to today. My husband is over at the yard strapping down his load and getting things ready for him to leave to Lubbock for the day. So I'm getting an early start. It's like 7.20 in the morning on a Sunday. My only day of the week to sleep in. And you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. It is a very gloomy morning here in Central Texas. There are a few other things that are on sale. I always check the rest of what they have on sale at Randall's because even though the meat is by far the best deal, they often have really good deals on like shredded cheese and some of their dairy items. Their eggs often go on a really good sale. 
And uh, I believe this week, those um, crystal light on the go powder drink things that can get quite pricey that my husband likes to drink, those are on sale this week. So I just kind of take a quick glance through everything that I use as a pantry staple and see if any of it's on sale and then I pick it up. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm gonna get going the rest of the way to get to Randall's and pick those things up. And I will check in with you guys later while I am doing some meal prep because I'm super excited about a recipe that I'm going to be testing out this week. It is not a recipe that I found. It's just an idea that I had. I love egg salad and I haven't had any in a long time, but I and I don't make it very often because when I do make egg salad, it's got a lot of mayonnaise in it. So it tends to be very high calorie, even though it is higher protein because of all the eggs, it's also very high fat. So I've tried one with Greek yogurt and I wasn't a fan, but the other day I was thinking, what if I put cottage cheese in my egg salad? And I think that would be really good. So I'm gonna try blending some cottage cheese and doing my egg salad with that. I did end up like looking to see if anybody had ever done that before. And of course, it is not a new idea with all of the love of cottage cheese that is out there right now. I am going to attempt to do that. So we'll try that out together later on today and see how it goes. But that's what I'm gonna be having for lunches this week is some cottage cheese egg salad sandwiches, West sweet and spicy chili protein chips and some strawberries, which are also on sale at Randall's this week. <laughs> anyway, let's go get the shopping trip done and see how that egg salad goes. All right, this is the part where I enter my number. It's my favorite part. Ready? Watch that total. Yeah, so good. Hi guys. I figured I would do like a grocery haul thing. I haven't done one in a while, but this is the haul. I know it doesn't look like much. Believe it or not, I actually only ended up going over budget by about 10 bucks. I spent around 65 at Randall's and then I spent around 45 at H-E-B. I got a lot of meat. So let's talk through what I got. Ugh. I also got some toilet paper. So restocked some household stuff as part of that budget. I got some bananas. If you guys missed my video from last week, check it out. I made some protein banana bread that was so good. So I had to make it again because I still have some of the protein peanut butter that I used to drizzle over the top. I'm also gonna be doing some peanut butter toast with breakfast this week to use that up, but I needed more banana bread because it was that good. So I'm gonna make up some more banana bread. I also got some pasta sauce for a macro-friendly food recipe. I'm gonna be making million dollar spaghetti. Excited about that. I have some pico de gallo for some copycat chilies margarita chicken. It's a macro-friendly food recipe from I think last month she did a whole month of Chili's copycat recipes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Macro Friendly Food is a high protein, low calorie recipe subscription service. She sends you new recipes every month and you have access to over 900 high protein, low calorie balanced recipes. I pay about 10 bucks a month for it. So if that's something you're interested in, I always have a discount code down in the description that will save you 10% off your first purchase. She also has cookbooks that you can purchase if you don't wanna do like a monthly subscription thing. Or she also has her Instagram where she has a bunch of recipes for free so you absolutely do not have to pay for it i just love it because it makes my life a million times easier when it comes to meal planning i also picked up some tomato sauce for some uh, an experiment another experiment <laughs> with that copycat margarita grilled chicken i have some leftover rice cauli rice blend so i like to mix half cauliflower rice and half regular rice because I don't like cauliflower rice on its own. So when I mix them half and half, I can't even tell the cauliflower rice is in there, but you get a bunch of hidden veggies and it's a lot lower calorie. But I have a bunch left over that's plain and I'm gonna try turning it into like a Mexican rice. So I'm gonna use some tomato sauce and just some like fajita spice that I have left over from a previous week. And hopefully it'll be delicious. Who knows? I also got some cottage cheese and some Neufchatel cheese, which is that third less fat cream cheese for that million dollar spaghetti. Also the mozzarella cheese is for that million dollar spaghetti. I picked up some margarita mix for the margarita chicken. 
I also grabbed some pre-cooked Mexican style rice and street corn for my husband because he will not eat that rice cauliflower rice blend. I needed some eggs. These were on sale at Randall's and my sister told me that they're delicious. I've had the caramel ones before and they are really good. I also like the cheddar ones. The ranch ones are okay, but they're not my favorite. Um, but these are the Quaker rice crisps. They're like little cookies, not cookies. I mean, they're little tiny rice cakes, but they're a lot thinner and they're crunchier, like crispier than the big rice cakes are. And one serving is 28 grams, which is an ounce, which is about 16 of these, you know, and they're about like, like that big. And it's only 110 calories. So this is a nice little, like easy to grab sweet treat snack thing that's not super high in calories and it's chocolate. So I'm going to give those a try. They had another coupon for these you guys know my love for oikos triple zero yogurt these are the oikos remix and they have 11 grams of protein each they're about 120 calories and this one is salted caramel non-fat yogurt with sea salt praline pretzels dark chocolate and butter toffee yum so that's going to be a nice little treat I also picked up a cocoa almond chocolate, which is coconut non-fat yogurt with honey praline almonds and dark chocolate. Also yum. This one's 140 calories with 11 grams of protein. And then I also picked up the s'mores flavor, which is vanilla non-fat yogurt with graham cookies, dark chocolate, and toasted marshmallow bark. And that one is 120 calories with 11 grams of protein. So super looking forward to my snack game this week uh even though i don't really snack that much but hey you know what that's okay if i get tired of the banana bread spoiler alert i'm not gonna get tired of banana bread it's just they were on such a good sale that i figured i would pick them up now they'll last for several weeks in the fridge and i can just try them whenever i need a little snack if you know you know and you know these are my favorite breakfast sausages and i needed more i picked this up for abby's birthday because they were a dollar off, so it was only 87 cents for this. So this was just a way for me to save some money on the party this weekend because I'm making her cake and cupcakes and cake sickles. <laughs> Don't get me started. I'm real worried about this weekend. It's gonna be crazy. This is my favorite low calorie bread of choice. This is the Sara Lee Delightful white bread. They also have wheat and honey wheat and like a whole grain one, but they're only 45 calories a slice. It's basically the size of a regular slice of bread. It's very soft. It tastes like white bread. It's delicious. This is going to be fantastic with my egg salad sandwiches. Let me know your favorite low calorie bread down in the comments. I saw that Nature's Own had one that was like a honey wheat that was only 40 calories a slice and I was tempted to try it except for I thought honey wheat wouldn't be as good with egg salad. The other problem I have is, is that if you guys missed my short that I did where I tried the nature's own keto hamburger buns. Those were terrible, like awful. So real nervous about trying anything nature's own again, cause those were not good. So if you've tried that and it's good, let me know. Okay. Also they had two pound packages of strawberries at Randall's this week on sale for $2.99 for the whole shebang of bang. So I'm going to be having strawberries with breakfast and lunch this week because I love strawberries and they're a very low calorie fruit, lots of fiber, happy, 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 happy. This was where most of our money went this week and I just stocked up on a ton of meat. So this was boneless, skinless chicken breast. I actually found some that were, it says thin cut, but they look like chicken tenderloins, uh, which I am totally fine with because chicken tenderloins tend to be more tender. And I got seven and a half pounds of chicken I also picked up two packages of 93% lean ground beef, a little over five pounds of ground beef that I picked up. And then I also picked up a three and a quarter pound chuck roast. So what, that's close to 12 pounds of meat. So that will last me a while, like three weeks ish. And that's like conservative, three weeks to a month of meat. I'm going to 
spend some time breaking those down into smaller packages, vacuum sealing them up and <laughs> finding a place to store them in my freezer. Some of that I'm gonna be using for this week's meals. So I don't need to worry about storing all of it. I'm gonna get my groceries put away. And once I get that done, then I'm gonna probably start hard boiling my eggs so that we can make some egg salad together after a little while. See you in a bit. Okay, I've been a busy little bee since I left you last. I just washed all my strawberries and got them and put away so that they're ready to eat throughout the week. I took 10 eggs. I use the 555 method for hard boiling my eggs. So you use a pressure cooker and you cook five minutes on high, a five minute natural release. So you let them sit for five minutes after the timer goes off and then you let them soak for five minutes in an ice bath. I'm gonna take these out and I basically just got a bowl of water and I put a whole bunch of ice in it and I let it sit in the fridge while these were cooking so that the water was plenty cold. And that's all there is to it. That's all my eggs. Okay, so I'm gonna let these guys do their, their five minute soak and then I'm gonna peel them and then I'll meet you back here so that we can put together the egg salad. Okay, bye. Okay, I got all of my eggs peeled and they're sitting in my little basket. If you don't have a little strainer for your Instant Pot, pressure cooker, whatever, this is how I steam my eggs. I also use that to make like chicken broth and stuff like that. It just makes it so much easier when you have things that you need to take out that you're cooking like in a sauce or a broth or something like that. And you can just take it out in that and you don't have to fish stuff out, whatever. Anyway, if you're interested in it, I'll have a link down in the the thing, the description. I have 10 eggs and I'm gonna do three quarters of a cup of cottage cheese, which is, that is how much I said, right? Again, not a recipe, just feeling it out. But like the macros on the egg salad sandwiches themselves are just crazy. The whole sandwich, so both slices of bread and one fifth of the mixture is only 257 calories ish because I'm not I didn't put in the calories for like garlic powder and Worcestershire sauce and stuff like that because that whole thing is going to maybe be like one or two calories per serving I'm not I'm not worried about that so 257 calories 22 grams of protein 20 carbs 11 fat yes please and thank you and yes it is three quarters of a cup of cottage cheese I'm using low fat two percent two percent one percent cottage cheese because for some reason, H-E-B has completely stopped carrying non-fat cottage cheese, and that's okay because fat is good for you. Good for your parts. I'm gonna use my scale instead of a measuring device because it means less dishes. A half a cup is 110 grams. That means a quarter cup is 55 grams. Yes, 55. 110 plus 55 is 165. Math! Um, thank you, husband, for having your alcohol in my shot. Okay, uh, 165 grams of cottage cheese. There we go. You could just mix it up with the cottage cheese just like that, but I'm gonna use my immersion blender. In addition, I'm going to blend it with the yolks because I like that part of my egg salad to be super smooth. So what I'm gonna do, I saw this thing, it was like, not cutting all the way through the whites and then like opening it like an avocado. Oh look and then the little thing stays whole. Oh how cute. Bloop. That's fun. So this is what I'm doing just like you do with an avocado. I'm rotating it around until I feel the resistance of the yolk and then rotate and then it comes apart and the little yolk is all whole. And then I'm gonna plop that in, bloop. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do that with all of my eggs and then I'll be back. I just have my cottage cheese and my egg yolks in the bowl and I'm just gonna use my little version blender. Oh. Nice and fluffy and smooth, no curds in sight. Now I would normally add quite a bit of salt to my egg salad, but cottage cheese is quite salty. So I'm gonna add my other seasonings first. And I'm basically seasoning this like I season my deviled eggs because 
Deviled eggs are super delicious. I'm totally fine with my egg salad tasting like deviled eggs. And I just had a thought, like if you wanted to like increase the protein even more without adding a bunch more calories, you could take some like liquid egg whites and like just cook them in a pan or steam them and just chop those up with the egg white parts. I bet that would probably work. Have a taste of this just as is. I mean, honestly, that's pretty good. Just plain. It's gonna need more salt. It is a bit on the thick side. I think it'll be okay. Okay, so it's gonna need a little bit of salt. I'm gonna add a little. I just got these electric salt and pepper shakers and I love them. So I'll have them linked down in the description if you're interested, but the fact that I don't have to sit and like crank pepper and salt, chef's kiss. I also put Worcestershire sauce, some Washer Sister sauce. I always add some Worcestershire to my devil eggs. So it's Worcestershire, but we call it Washer Sister sauce. Need a little onion powder, a little garlic powder, my mom always adds celery salt to hers, which is delicious. I don't have any celery salt, so I'm not gonna add that to mine. You can either do mustard powder or Dijon mustard. Since mine's a little thick, I'm gonna do Dijon. You can also just do plain yellow mustard too, if you want. And a little splash, teensy one, of white vinegar. Just a splash, like quarter teaspoon. Give that a mix. It's a little thick. I'm gonna add some water to it, just to thin it out a little. The eggs will sweat too, so I don't want it to get too thin, but oh yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, so I added the Dijon, but I think I am gonna add just a little bit of mustard powder. And we'll do a little paprika, why not? Mm. Ooh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, and then I'm gonna drop those eggs in. I'm gonna use my mixing chop. The meat masher, this little buddy that you use for ground beef and stuff. Moosh the eggs around until they're all chopped up. I like my eggs really tiny, so. Oh, I missed an egg. I was like, there's one in here that's really hard. There was still a yolk in it, oops. And obviously you can cut your eggs up by hand if you want to, but oh, this is a lot less fiddly and honestly, I don't really notice the difference. Especially because I like my eggs to be like chopped up really small. Okay, and I'm gonna taste it again for salt now that it's mixed in with the whites. <laughs> so this is the texture we're working with. Quite firm, which I'm okay with because egg salad as it sits has a tendency to sweat and it gets more loose. Let's taste a little bit of that with the egg white. Mm. Mm-hmm, more salt. I want a little white pepper. White pepper has a completely different flavor profile than black pepper. I will try to throw together some semblance of a recipe for this for you guys, but honestly, I feel like it's just the egg to cottage cheese ratio. This probably could have used a little bit more cottage cheese. Like I probably could have gone with a full cup. Oh yeah, that was what it needed. Oh, wow, yum. Dump this in here. That is my egg salad done for the week. I'm very excited about eating that for my lunches this week. So now lunches are done. The only other food prep I have to do today is to make a loaf of banana bread. If you missed that last week, check it out. So, so good the best banana, like cannot tell that it's protein banana bread and lower calorie. It is delicious. So, so, so good. I cannot say enough good things. Make this a very easy and quick lunch option. I mean, a little fiddly in the beginning, like just to throw it together, but now all I have to do is slap some of this between two pieces of bread, grab a bag of chips, put some strawberries in a container, and that's lunch. I think that's all I have for you guys today. I know this was a really short, weird video. 
I'm glad that I got some time to spend with you at least a little bit today. I hope you're having an amazing week and I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here, for supporting me. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. We're on a journey Looking back on the things that we've taken for granted But feels like we're learning to be better with